Hi, my name's Will Storr. I'm a best-selling author and long-form journalist who's written for titles such as The Guardian, The Sunday Times and The New Yorker. And my area of expertise is the science of storytelling. Uh, that all began uh, when I wrote my latest book, which is called The Heretics, which is a deep dive into the psychology and neuroscience of storytelling. And it looks in depth at how everybody lives their life in kind of narrative form. That's how we understand our lives. That's how we understand other people's lives. Um, and that's how we kind of process information out there in the world. We're kind of surrounded by stories, we're immersed in stories. Uh, you know, the brain is commonly seen as a kind of a logic processor, like a computer, but actually it's not. It's a, it's a storyteller. And uh, my deep dive into the kind of science of storytelling uh, reveals how uh, some of those mechanisms work. And by understanding how those mechanisms work, we can all learn how to become better storytellers. And that's you know, if you're a writer wanting to write a better novel, if you're a journalist wanting to communicate with people better, or uh, whether you're interested in public speaking and you wanted to really communicate with people, you really wanted to sort of engage with them and not have them sort of, sort of drifting off after five minutes, you really do have to understand uh, the rules of storytelling. And uh, my work uh, into the science of storytelling, the psychology and neuroscience of storytelling, um, really reveals uh, some of the absolute fundamentals of how that works. When I was doing my research into the psychology and neuroscience of uh, uh, storytelling, I came up with this idea, I call it the hero maker. Uh, that's what the brain really is, is it's a hero maker. It, it has all these kind of biases and prejudices uh, that makes us feel as if we're the kind of the heroic uh, lead character in the movie of our lives, in the story of our lives. And we all kind of feel as if we are this kind of James Bond uh, struggling in order to kind of make the world a better place. And, and, and that kind of narrative trick happens constantly as we're going throughout our days. We might feel as if we are the hero of our story if we're you know, literally trying to set up a charity that's going to end uh, poverty. Or uh, we might feel like that hero if our train's late and we're late for a meeting and we're struggling to kind of beat the forces that are kind of ranged against us. Like we're constantly experiencing everything in that kind of hero maker fashion. And that's important when we hear stories of other people that they're also structured in that way. Uh, there's the classic three-act structure, which goes back to ancient Greece, which is crisis, struggle, and resolution. And all storytelling, certainly Western storytelling, should follow that format. The common misconception about the brain is that, is that it's like a computer, that it's like a logic processor. Now, this couldn't be more wrong. Actually, the brain is a story processor. I call it a hero maker. What it does is it, uh, in the words of the uh, neuroscientist Chris Frith, is it makes you what he calls the invisible actor at the centre of the world. It reorders reality in such a way that you're like James Bond overcoming a series of obstacles in order to kind of make the world a better place. And it populates your story with heroes, villains, love interests, all the things that we expect to see when going to the movies and sitting down to watch an amazing story. And we see that constantly in, in the way that major companies brand themselves. Apple computers, for example, uh, pitch themselves as a, as, a, as a technology company who are all working hard to you know, break the bounds of science, of what's possible with science in order to make all our lives better. You know, the classic Coca-Cola campaign is, I want to teach the world to sing. You know, they weren't just um, selling sugared water, they were literally trying to make the world a better place. And that's what we see time and time again in the most successful marketing campaigns that have ever been seen. Um, companies and brands um, pitch themselves as this kind of hero that is struggling against great odds in order to make the world a better place. And that also goes uh, when we are talking, when we're trying to communicate with people our own personal missions. We need to be thinking about um, our story uh, in that sense. You know, what is it that makes us this kind of David character fighting against the Goliath of our, of our opposition in order to make the world a better place in some way? And as soon as you start telling that ancient archetypal story of you being this David who has this amazing insight or this amazing idea and you, you're desperate to make it work because you want to share this amazing idea with everybody uh, but you have these great odds to fight uh, to, and to overcome in order to do so. As soon as you start speaking in these terms in this classic three arc crisis struggle resolution way, people are engaged, people will listen and people will naturally start being on your side. I've been doing my workshops for a number of years now and in that time I've seen a huge range of people, uh, 
authors, novelists, journalists, of course, but also screenwriters, um, people from NGOs, people from marketing companies, scientists wanting to know how to craft their kind of complex messages in, in, into a kind of story form that the general public will, will, will appreciate and understand. And also I've helped a lot of people who are interested in public speaking, who, know, who don't have a lot of experience in a um, physically kind of communicating with a, with a big audience of people, uh, but, but um, more importantly, uh, knowing how to arrange and structure their story in such a way that you can pretty much guarantee that it's going to sort of hit them really where it matters.